What should you expect when the narcissist loses control over you? Well, there are 10 predictable things the narcissist will do when they realize they can't control you. And that's what I'm covering today. Let's get started. Hi friends, Tammy M. Joyce here, Empowerment Life Coach, creator of the Freedom Class and the Ascension Class. And if you're new to my channel, welcome. Please take a second to say hello and introduce yourself in the comments section below. And if you're back, welcome back. Thanks for showing up and for tuning in. Either way, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post new videos throughout the week. So let's talk about what happens when the narcissist realizes they no longer have control over you. Number one, they play dumb. When the narcissist realizes that you're onto them, you've figured them out, you've seen behind the mask and you're not so easily duped, the first thing that will happen is they'll play dumb. Like they have no ever loving idea what they've done to upset you or what exactly it is that has caused you any discomfort. They'll pretend that they can't for the life of them understand why you would question their sincerity and their motives. The reality of the situation or the very real impact their disturbing attitude, behavior and choices have had on you completely escapes them according to them. And from there, they'll find a way to play victim, which is point number two. The moment the narcissist realizes that they no longer have control over your perception of them or your perception of reality. In other words, you're no longer buying what they're selling suddenly they'll be the one who has been wronged by you no matter how poorly they themselves have behaved they'll claim to be completely innocent and misunderstood when it's clear that you see them as they really are as opposed to the false persona they work so hard to promote themselves as being and it'll often sound like this no that's not what i said that's not what i did I have no idea why you're so upset, why you're reacting this way, what I've done to upset you. You've misunderstood and you're just too sensitive. You've got me all wrong. In the hopes of appealing to your highly empathic and compassionate nature and generating sympathy from you as well as others, they'll twist, spin and distort the facts according to their very selective memory until you look and sound like the devil incarnate. And as my grandmother used to say, they come up smelling like roses, pure as the driven snow, ever so innocent and blameless. No matter what they've done to you, you'll be painted as the villain to their victim all day long to anyone who will listen. Number three, they gaslight. Gaslighting is how the narcissist works to cause you to doubt yourself, your feelings, your experience, as well as your perception of reality. It's a form of emotional and psychological abuse and it only works if you let it. When the narcissist realizes they can no longer control you or your perception of them and playing dumb and casting themselves as the victim hasn't had the desired effect on you, they'll double down on their efforts by attempting to gaslight you. Again, it'll sound like this. No, I never said that. We never agreed to that. That's not what happened. And of course, you've misunderstood. And you'll know you're being gaslit, not only because you know what you live, you know what you heard, you know exactly what they did and did not do, what they did and did not say, but more importantly, when their efforts to gaslight you don't work, the narcissist's true colors will really start to shine through as the Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde persona swings with tremendous intensity. They'll swing back and forth as they struggle to control how you see them through their gaslighting tactics while simultaneously becoming progressively more and more frustrated by the fact that they're losing dominion and control over you. Whatever you do, don't argue and don't defend yourself. Instead, hold your ground and give them all the rope they want. Then stand back and watch as they hang themselves by going on to further expose the real truth of who they actually are. Number four, manipulate and control others' perception. When the narcissist can no longer control you, they'll work overtime to control how others see you, what they think of you, and how they feel about you. 
This, of course, will be done covertly behind your back, narcissists being the toxic little cowards that they are. But make no mistake, they will go out of their way to poison the hearts and minds of others towards you, including children, adolescents, and young adults, anyone they have influence over. They've probably already been working overtime to create loyalty conflicts with those who are easily influenced. So don't be surprised when these children you've been nothing but kind to start behaving poorly towards you. Or adults who hardly know you look at you sideways with zero provocation. You can be sure the narcissist has been in their ear with all manner of nonsense. In addition, if your ability to discern who and what they are causes enough narcissistic injury, you can bet they'll run a classic years-long smear campaign painting you as all the things that they themselves are, and then some. Which brings me to my next point. Number five, confession through projection. In spite of the insanity of their own behavior and their own toxic and abusive ways, you'll become the big bad villain to their victim, no matter how much they have to lie and deny to make it so. Suddenly you're the fake, the fraud, the bully, the liar, the manipulator, the one who needs psychological help or the one who can't be trusted around children, while they continue to enable and protect themselves and others who are causing all manner of damage and destruction. Like for example, the toxic grandparent who singles out and bullies one of the grandchildren, or worse yet, the family pedophile who has the benefit of being protected and therefore fully enabled. And you're the bad guy because you happen to notice or finally found the courage to stand up and speak the truth. Sick stuff. But this is what it is when you're dealing with people who land on the spectrum of destructive narcissism. Now comment below and tell me whether or not you've experienced any of these tactics. And if so, how'd you handle it? Let me know in the comments section below. And if you'd like to learn more about the possibility of working with me in my eight week transformational coaching program, the freedom class, there is a link in the description below where you can apply to see if you qualify for a free one-on-one -on -one consultation with either myself or a member of my team. Number six, rageful retaliation. Once the narcissist knows they have zero control over you, your perceptions, and in particular, your perception of them, in other words, you can't be fooled anymore, they'll go for maximum damage. They will create as much chaos as possible. They'll cause as much pain, drama, trauma, and devastation as they possibly can on their way out. They rarely exit a relationship dynamic, any relationship dynamic, quietly, especially if they're not the ones closing the door on the relationship. And based on both personal and professional experience, I can tell you that the reason for this is, in their mind, by taking it to the next level, they now get to blame you for the dramatic fallout and how badly things ended. They'll crank up the volume to maximum intensity, spewing all manner of abuse and insanity, and then tell everyone just how terrible you are. After all, you have a lot of nerve seeing them for who they are. You have a lot of nerve seeing their behavior for what it is. How dare you? Don't you know who the narcissist thinks they are? The nerve of you for having reasonable standards, limits, and boundaries. The nerve of you for not being willing to stand still in a toxic environment with toxic people, pretending all manner of manipulation, dysfunction, and abuse isn't taking place. The nerve. Imagine. Number seven. They'll stalk you and your social media accounts. You know you're dealing with a narcissist, covert or overt, when they don't have the emotional maturity required to actually do anything real, sane, loving, kind, or even remotely healthy to contribute to resolving whatever the issue is, but instead they'll stalk your social media profiles to see what they can take personally looking for something, anything that enables them to point the finger at you. See, it's not me, I'm not the issue. He or she is the one to blame for all that's gone on here. Please. Number eight, hoovering and future faking. Hoovering and future faking often go hand in hand. 
To begin with, hoovering is a form of emotional blackmail the narcissist uses when it's clear that their chosen target is no longer under their spell and is either seeking to distance themselves or has managed to establish no contact. And narcissists hoover in a number of ways. They might try to provoke an emotional reaction from you and there are no end to the ways and the depths with which they'll sink to achieve that end. Given the opportunity, they'll wax poetically about how much they've changed and how different things will be moving forward. If only you would find it in your heart to give them another chance. Future faking is often part of the hoovering tactic in which, again, given the opportunity, the narcissist will talk to you in elaborate detail about all the wonderful things that the two of you will do together in the future. The cute little restaurant you'll absolutely love, how the two of you will explore the world together, or even the dream home you'll live in and how many children you'll have. And here's what you need to know about hoovering. Narcissists do not change. And here's what you need to know about future faking. It's just that. Fake. It's never going to happen. None of it. Spare yourself a lot of pain and don't buy it. Number nine, the disingenuous apology. Narcissists lack empathy. They lack conscience. They go through life with a bizarre and exaggerated sense of entitlement. As far as they're concerned, they're entitled to do what they do. So don't kid yourself. They're not the least bit sorry they hurt you. They're sorry that they're now suffering the natural consequences of their appalling attitude, choices, and behavior. So don't fall for the fake apology. Any changes you see short term will be just that, temporary and very short lived. Once they have you back where they want you, they'll be right back to their old tricks, but worse, because now they're pissed that they've been exposed. Number 10, move on to another target. If you stand your ground in the face of all of this manipulation and deception, refusing to be swayed, if you remain unmoved in your position, eventually the narcissist will be left with no choice but to move on to another unsuspecting target. They'll have to find someone who's easier to manipulate and exploit as a source of narcissistic supply. And although admittedly this is not so good for the new target, it's excellent news for you. You'll be left in peace. So stand your ground for as long as it takes. Although not easy, I promise you, it will be worth it. And with that, I'm going to call it a wrap. But don't stop now. I have well over 100 more videos right here on YouTube for you to watch to help you better understand the detrimental effects of narcissistic abuse. And more importantly, learn what you need to do now to heal from the abuse so you can start living your best life in peace, confidence, and freedom. And if you want to go deeper with me, go to TammyMCoaching.com and learn about my unique tried and true process garnered over decades of experience and learn how you can become a client.